You're watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. For the second year in a row, UNLV and New Mexico play in a crazy seesaw affair. Straight ahead in the Red Zone, a look back at Saturday's last minute loss to the Lobos. Plus, a look ahead to this week's home game against Air Force on Veterans Day weekend. And we profile the Rebel radio team of Russ Langer and Mike Pritchard. Time to get fired up. The Red Zone is ready to run right now. This is the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Good evening. Welcome inside the Reb Zone. Thanks for dropping in. Kevin Bollinger alongside UNLV head football coach Bobby Houck. And certainly a, a tough one to swallow after last night's loss. Yeah, you know, it was a great football game, certainly, and, and uh, fun to be involved in right up to the to the final gun when we didn't get, uh, didn't get the W. And I guess the thing is we're playing with everybody in the conference, but we can't win, and that's, that's maddening. And there's a variety of reasons for it. Uh, you know, it was pretty evenly matched, and... On the stat sheet, it wasn't, but that's not where it counts. We got to win on the scoreboard, and we didn't yesterday. Well, let's start breaking this one down from last night, where it was a slow start on the offensive side of the ball, and that really hampered the Rebels early. A cool, blustery day at Sam Boyd, but the Rebels were fired up to face New Mexico. The Lobos had the ball first, but the UNLV defense forced a three and out. On the punt, Keith Whiteley fumbles, and New Mexico recovers to keep the ball, but now in UNLV territory at the 34. That didn't last long. First play from scrimmage, Sonny Sonatoa forces the fumble, and the Rebels get the ball for the first time. But the offense couldn't generate much, and both teams exchanged a couple of punts until deep in the first quarter. That's when New Mexico started moving the ball on a drive that started on its own 20. Jarrell Presley rattles off a 23-yard run to move it towards midfield. Then Presley gets out to the left side, has a burst of speed, and is gone. 33 yards for the score. New Mexico was up 7-0 with 2.42 left in the first. The offense went three and out again, but the defense continued to make stops. On fourth and eight for the Lobos, Tao Lotalele comes up big and UNLV gets the ball back on downs. After another exchange of punts, UNLV had the ball deep in their own territory. Quarterback Blake Decker rolls right. He's under pressure and throws an interception. New Mexico have field position, and it turned into a Zach Rogers 44-yard field goal to make it 10-0 Lobos. Another three and out combined with a poor punt by Logan Yunker gave New Mexico the ball near midfield. They went right to work. Terry Ed Gibson rattles off 30 down to the UNLV 16-yard line. On second and goal from the one, Presley gets it in from a yard out, and all of a sudden, it was 17-0 New Mexico with 150 left before the half. The offense finally got clicking late in the second. Decker goes up top on the sideline and watch Kendall Keys make the great grab for the first down at the New Mexico 42. Then Shaq Murray Lawrence with the big run for 24 yards to the 18. Later in the drive, first and goal at the two, and Decker keeps it himself for the touchdown. Even with a poor offensive first half, UNLV had pulled within 10 and was getting the ball to start the second half. Both teams went into the locker room with New Mexico leading 17-7. All right, let's start with the slow start offensively, and you had to make some adjustments on the offensive line, and Brett Boyko had to move from left tackle to left guard. First time he's played that position in his career, uh, yeah. at least college. <clears throat> yeah, he, yeah, he'd never played any offensive line in high school, so it's first time for, for everything for him yesterday at guard. You know, we moved Kyle Saxlett in, the freshman at left tackle, and they struggled a little bit the first half. 
uh, there's a little bit of what New Mexico was doing, a little bit of us struggling, and and uh, you know they played better the second half. But uh, we were we started slow, we couldn't move the chains, and it cost us. Uh, you know, getting down by 17 is tough to battle back from, which we obviously did. That drive at the end of the first half was big. The defensive side of the ball, they did all right, I think, against the triple option of the run earlier, but they still had some issues. Is it more the scheme you're going against or, or the tackling, especially a lot of arm tackles and tackles up high? Well, we're going to see some things even in the second half. We, we, we tackled pretty well. We played hard. Uh, we stopped the triple option for the most part really well, maybe as good or better than anybody has done. But the problem is you get so enamored with stopping the triple option that they hurt you with just some base, like this play we're looking at here is just simple inside zone, breaks in the weak B gap, and you get so uh, uh, caught up in stopping the triple that you don't stop the base run plays. And then you couple it with the call sheet has to be whittled down. We probably needed one more call in the fourth quarter. They had enough plays, and on their last drive, we wish we would have had maybe another call to go to to, to give them another change up. But there's always that fine line between having too much and not executing against that triple. Well, as we said earlier, the Rebels did have the ball to start the second half, and this turned out to be a wild 30 minutes. UNLV had the ball to open the second half and started to get good balance in its offense. Shaq finds a hole, shakes some tackles, and breaks to the outside for a 39-yard gain down to the New Mexico 28. Then Decker hits Anthony Williams for a 15-yard gain to the three-yard line to set up first and goal. On second down, Shaq pounds his way in from a yard out, and the lead was cut to 17-14. The defense forced a three and out, but the Rebel offense had to start his drive at their own five. No problem. Decker and Devontae Boyd got into a rhythm, connecting on three passes to move the ball down the field, then Decker used his feet to pick up chunks of yardage along the way. Shaq finishes off the drive with this 14-yard touchdown run. 95 yards in 13 plays in 4 minutes, 27 seconds. UNLV had its first lead of the game at 21-17 with 5.49 left in the third. We move to the fourth. Decker had the offense moving again, but disaster. Decker's pass bounces off the fingertips of Boyd and right to Isaiah Brown, who returns it all the way down to the four-yard line. First play from scrimmage, and the Lobos Presley puts it in the end zone. The Lobos had the lead back at 24-21. Back to work for the offense. On third and five, Decker to Boyd for 21 yards and a first down. On third and nine at their own 42, Decker goes sideline to Micah Mataele for the conversion and into New Mexico territory. Then Williams gets the grab and he fights for the extra yardage, 23 on the play to the 18. Third and one at the nine, Shaq grinds out two for a first down. Two plays later, Keith Whiteley takes a hit, keeps on going and adds a Superman leap. UNLV was back in the lead 28-24 with 8.28 left in the game. New Mexico put together a huge drive, running the ball 15 straight times, and the Rebels just couldn't stop it. As the Lobos pushed the ball down the field, Gibson would finish it off with a three-yard score. 15 plays, 66 yards, and more importantly, 7.08 of the clock used up. The Lobos were back up 31-28 with just 1.22 to go. UNLV went into the two-minute offense, but Decker took a sack on first down for a loss of seven. On third and 10 at their own 26, Decker scrambles. He gets 13 yards and the first down. Then a pass to Whiteley put UNLV in the Lobo territory at the 49, with just 12 seconds left, and UNLV called their final timeout. First play out of the break, Decker has Mataele all alone for a field goal range catch, but he misfires. Decker would then hit Boyd at the 38, just one second left on the clock. Enter Brian McIntyre. He's sent out for a 55-yard field goal attempt. He wasn't even on the roster, but filling in for the injured Nico Bornen. The kick is just short as time expires, and the comeback misses by mere inches. 
New Mexico rushes for 301 yards and passes for only five yards. But they escape Sam Boyd with a win as the Rebels fall 31 to 28. Injuries have forced you to use a lot of guys <laughs> down the depth charts, but in this game in particular, you went beyond the depth charts. You're talking about walk-ons, and, and the kicker is a good example, somebody who uh, wasn't even on the roster. Yeah, there are a lot of walk-on guys got in the game yesterday, and you know, it's, it's what it is. Uh, sometimes you can overcome injury, but when they start to mount, um, you know, it's, it's hard to do. That was a nice try by Brian uh, to go in there and get that thing airborne and, you know, leave it about a foot short, but... Uh, you know, we had guys in, in critical roles that were playing in that game that uh, have never played before, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're sick we didn't come out with a win. That last drive, the, the killer part of it was that sack on the very first play. It was. That's, exa that's exactly right. You can't take the sack there. we got to get rid of the ball because we only have one timeout left. We can't use it there. Um, it probably cost us maybe three more plays. And then, and then you know, we, we had a chance for uh, – uh, Mata L.A. To, to score on that corner route had we been able to get the ball to him. We just missed him, and that happens. But, uh, you know, there were opportunities for us to win the game, and, and we didn't do it, and you know, we got to do better. For the average fan that's watching this game, either in person or at home, they're sitting here thinking, you know New Mexico's going to run the ball. They don't throw the ball. I think they threw it five times uh, and completed two passes. Uh, how can it not be stopped? What's the answer to that? Well, you, you, can't, you can't leave guys uncovered because um, there's always the chance they can throw it, and they do throw it uh, uh, well at times on the season. So um, there are three guys back there potentially have the ball, and they're reading what you do on defense. And, uh, you know, we stopped them as well as anybody has all year, including Arizona State. So uh, we don't we feel pretty good about our defensive effort, actually. Uh, we just need to, you know, get one more stop on defense, uh, maybe uh, turn it over one time less on offense or get one more score, and we win the thing. The bright spot on the offensive side of the ball, Shaq Murray Lawrence, the first 100-yard rusher for UNLV this season. He ran hard. Yeah, Shaq did a nice job, and if you notice some of these carries, that ball's nice and high and tight, and he's taking care of the football. He saw things well uh, yesterday, and you know I hope that means he's coming on and going to have a great uh, couple of weeks here. Well, we're just revving up here in the Rev Zone. The players react to Saturday's game up next, and we're going to preview this Saturday's game against Air Force. What will it take to stop the Falcon triple option? And how much does the New Mexico game help out? Red Zone back with answers in just two minutes. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. It's frustrating, you know. I mean, Kind of been the story of a whole story, you know, almost there, but, you know, just can't find a way to, to finish it. You know, almost is not good enough, you know. I'll rightly speak for that. Well, next are the Rebels. Rare back-to-back -back home games this season. Air Force comes in for a Saturday afternoon tilt at Sam Boyd, and for the second week in a row, winning's going to come down to stopping the run. Air Force is a game on the schedule that many teams dread. Preparing for the triple option is never easy, and getting players to stick to their assignments is always a hold-your-breath moment. The Falcons have scaled back a bit on the option, but it's still a weapon that they use. It does provide a way, maybe where you have a little bit smaller bodies, uh, where perhaps you can lean a little more on the execution part of it. Uh, frankly, I'd love to have a bunch of 320 pounders up front. Uh, that'd be a fun way to play football. Uh, but you know, it, we realize that uh, there's some things that you do have to do a little bit differently if you're gonna if you're gonna have a chance to turn a bowl bit at the Air Force Academy. Air Force has been impressive at times this season, including a 28-14 win against Boise State, where they forced seven turnovers. Just like New Mexico, the Falcons get their yards through the ground game, averaging nearly 300 yards rushing among the top in the country. Last year, UNLV became bowl eligible in Colorado Springs, trouncing Air Force 41-21 in sub-freezing temperatures. Weather won't be a major factor this Saturday at Sam Boyd. Discipline and execution will. Well, you just faced New Mexico in the triple option. To get that in back-to-back -back weeks, how does that help with the preparation for Air Force, even though it's a little different? You know, the offenses are different and and 
what we're going to have to call and where our eyes are going to have to be are, are, are different with Air Force. But the 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 idea of eye discipline and uh, responsibility on on the option play on the triple option play will have carryover and hopefully it'll pay some dividends. One distinct difference between Air Force and New Mexico is Air Force is willing to take their shots down the field passing, and that's something that your guys can't cheat in the defensive back. Yeah, and you know New Mexico had their shot plays too, um, both against us in the in the past and, and in the film leading up to our game. But Air Force, uh, their options a little different, uh, and they they make you defend it, and where they generally hurt you is the counter stuff off of the option. All their pass plays are big plays. You know, that's just the way it is. They have, some years they come in, they're averaging 25 yards of completion or something. And that, that's what you have to stop and you have to be on your toes all the time. Well, straight ahead in the Reb Zone, we're going to profile the Rebel radio team. What makes the duo of Russ Langer and Mike Pritchard click in the booth? Find out as the Reb Zone rolls on in just two minutes. You're watching the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Every week, Rebel fans tune in to listen to the radio call of Russ Langer and Mike Pritchard. They are two veterans with the background to let fans see the action, even if they're just listening. Sports broadcasting has had its share of great teams. Madden and Summerall in the NFL. So when you talk to Jimmy Johnson about his offense, he said the one thing we have to do, the first thing we have to do is protect Dan Marino. Crook and Kife with the San Francisco Giants. He hits it high! He hits it deep! Out of here! And for UNLV football, it's Russ and Pritch. It is a UNLV touchdown! Every Rebel football game, Russ Langer and Mike Pritchard are there to give fans the call and the inside of what's happening on the field, keeping in mind what to bring to the table. Uh, first of all, credibility. I, I think that's most important. Uh, and, and then I keep in mind, too, that everybody's listening. Uh, is a football fan. They know the game. I'm not there to teach anybody the game. I just want to bring some insight, uh, maybe a story or two. Uh, just bring them on the field, too, the experiences that I've had. Uh, I just want the audience to feel that as well. If you have good chemistry, play-by-play -play announcer and the color man, then, uh, then that really, everything kind of plays off of that. Because regardless of what kind of game it is, whether the team's ahead, behind, it's a close game, then you always have that partner to lean on. And uh, I'm very lucky because Mike Pritchard, in my opinion, my humble opinion, is a network level talent that happens to be working here. In the spring and summer, Langer is the voice of the Las Vegas 51s and makes the transition from the slower pacings of baseball to football. First game is a little tricky because you're, you get into a certain rhythm with, uh, with baseball that's entirely different from football. The whole tone, uh, the whole pacing of it is different. But uh, after, after the first couple of reps in the, early in the first quarter of the first game, you begin to get into that, that new rhythm and it's, uh, it's fast paced and it's exciting and, and it's a lot of fun. He's got time, 20, 15, 10 to the five and he's dragged down. Pritchard is a hometown guy, starring at Rancho High School, then heading off to Colorado before becoming a first-round pick of the Atlanta Falcons and enjoying a lengthy NFL career. After retiring, he made the move from the field to the booth at UNLV. You do have a fair catch, you know, young man out there. I mean, you're trying to play a lot of football for a lot more years. <laughs> no need to take on undue punishment if you can't. It was nerve-wracking in the beginning, um, but I'm a competitor and I'm a guy that uh, wants to exceed challenges. So uh, in the beginning when it was a challenge, I needed to learn so much. Uh, I just wanted to get better. Come on back to us after this course. My life sports. Pritch has seen his new career blossom. During the week, he's the co-host of a highly rated sports talk show in Denver. Decker, first running play, hands to Whiteley. Whiteley finds a hole, 50, 45, 40. He may go. He's hit at the 25, down at the 21. When Pritch and Russ come together on Saturdays, the magic comes alive. And for listeners, it puts them inside the game. You can hear the love, and it's genuine, the way you want your broadcasters to be. I'm just a kid living a dream, and uh, it beats working for a living. The kick is in the air. The kick is good. And the Rebels have won the game in overtime. They beat Fresno State on homecoming. All right, one last break, and we're back with the Rebel Plays of the Week. But first, here's a look at how other Mountain West teams did over the weekend. You're 
watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Well, you and I'll be now officially eliminated from bowl contention for this season. How do you make sure that your guys stay focused for these final four games? Well, it's, it's – uh... Good question. You know, we've got we've got some big games out there, some some huge games on our schedule that are important to our guys, and uh, I think our guys will go play. The attitude's never been a problem with us. We just need to play better, and and you know we're playing hard. We're excited to play. We just got to go play well enough to win on the scoreboard. All right, go get them at Air Force. Before we leave, we want to give a quick congratulations to the UNLV women's volleyball team. They knocked off seventh-ranked Colorado State Saturday night. Their first win against a top-10 team in program history. Here's the Rebel Plays of the Week. Thanks for joining us in the Rebel Zone. Good night. Reb Zone Sports Show was presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications.